All right, everybody, welcome to Math with Grace. Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be looking at our geometry book, 1008, Section 3, all about solids. We're going to start our lesson with prisms. A prism has two bases. We can call it the top and the bottom. Two bases, okay? The segments connecting the corresponding vertices of a prism are called lateral edges, okay? So all the pieces moving from a vertice of a base to the other base are called lateral edges. The lateral faces are the sides of the prism that are not part of the base, okay? So this side here, 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 and here. This rectangular prism has four faces. This triangular prism has three, okay? If the, base, if the lateral edges are perpendicular, okay? Here I've shown two that are perpendicular. If the lateral edges are perpendicular, then these are called right prisms. If the lateral edges are not perpendicular, then these are called oblique prisms. The altitude of the prism is a segment perpendicular to the plane of the bases. So this lateral edge here has to be per is perpendicular, okay, to the plane that the each of the bases on. So it's perpendicular to each base, and these bases are parallel to each other, okay? That is called the altitude or the height of the prism, all right? Now, there's a couple of um, formulas that we're going to use for prism, and that is for the lateral area and the total area. The lateral area of a prism is the sum of the areas of all of its lateral faces. In this triangular prism, like I said before, it has three lateral faces, so the lateral area is the sum of all of its faces, okay? Now the total area is the lateral area plus the area of the two bases, okay? So we can find the lateral area first and then the total area. How we do that is if we think of this shape right here laid out flat, and for those of you who have been in my class, you know that I am not the best artist. That's why I don't teach art, okay? If we were to lay this shape out flat as such, okay? Our height would be here, our altitude is here, okay? And then this length here, this length of our lateral edges laid out straight, okay? is what we're, is called the perimeter, like if you walked all the way around this shape, okay, it would be this length. We're going to call it P for perimeter, and that is the information we need for our formula, because for a prism, the lateral area is equal to the perimeter times the height, okay? So we need to know the length of each one of these lateral faces and then that total added together, just like any other perimeter, we're going to use for our formula as long as well as the height, okay? And then the total area is equal to the lateral area plus the area of the two bases. So plus two big B. Big B equals the area of the base, okay? And with our work, we all know the area of the base is one-half height times base or, or the apothem times the perimeter. One other formula we're going to be working with this lesson is volume as well. And for a prism, the volume equals big B, which is the area of the base, times the height. So let's go ahead and take a look at problem 3.1. For 3.1, this is the shape that we're given. And the first thing I want to do is unfold this shape, okay? If we unfold it, we end up with a two foot section followed by a three foot section followed by, and I know this is not the scale, followed by a two foot section 
followed by a three foot section, okay? And we can just tack on the bases wherever. But what we're more concerned with right now is our perimeter, okay? And our height is five foot, okay? So now that our shape is unfolded, let's plug in the information that we can to find our lateral area. So our lateral area is our perimeter times the height. Now our perimeter is the sum total of this, two plus three plus two plus three. So our perimeter is 10 and our height is five. So our lateral area is equal to 50 feet squared. We had 10 feet this way, five feet this way, that gives us a feet squared. Okay, now we can figure out our total area as our lateral area, which was the 50 feet squared, plus the two times the area of the base. Well, our base, our base is our rectangle, right? And the rectangle is two by three. We find the area of a rectangle just by length by width, okay? So the area of our rectangle, the area of our base is six feet, but we need two of those, all right? So that means our lateral, or our total area is 50 feet plus 12 feet squared. So that gives us a total of 62 feet squared for our total area, okay? And then last but not least, these problems are wanting to know the volume, all right? now. The volume they have listed here is the big B times H, which is basically the same as the length times the width times the height, okay? So here is our big B, right? We just figured that out for the total area problem. Now, well, I guess not here. Here is our big B. We don't want two of them. We only need one. So we've got six, which is our the area of our base, times our height, which is five. Feet, okay, and that gives us a total volume of 30 feet squared. So now we figured out the lateral area, the total area, and the volume for this particular shape. Now let's take a look at problem 3.4. In 3.4, we're given this right triangular prism. And just like on the other problem, the first thing we want to do is unfold it. Okay, and when we unfold it, we are given a four foot, is it inches this time? No, nope, four feet, four foot space and a six foot side. Okay, here's our four foot, here's our six foot. But currently, we're not sure what the length of this side is, of this lateral face. Okay, but we do know that it is eight feet high. So first things first, we need to figure out if we're gonna have our perimeter, we need to figure out how long this shape is. If we pull out just that triangle for right now, which is, I'm gonna draw quite a bit smaller so I don't run out of room, which is a right triangle, right? And what are we looking to solve for? We're looking to solve for the hypotenuse. Therefore, we can simply use Pythagorean theorem to solve for this. So we know that four squared plus six squared is equal to our C squared or our hypotenuse. 16 plus 36 equals C squared, okay? Therefore, our C squared is equal to 52. Now, to solve for that, we need to find the square root of both sides. So the square root of 52 is equal to the square root of C squared, okay? We know that a square, the square root of a square is just that number, okay? Now, our 52 is a little bit more complicated, but it is the same as the square root of 4 times 13, okay? 4 times 13 equals 52. 4 is a perfect root, so that gives us 2 times the square root of 13 equals C. So now that we know that this section is 2 times the square root of 13 feet long, 
right? Now we can use that information to find our lateral area. So our lateral area is equal to our perimeter. We still have to add these together. Unfortunately, we cannot add two times the square root of 13 to this 10 value that we have here. They are not like numbers and therefore we cannot add them together. But our perimeter is 10 plus two times the square root of 13, okay? And then what is our height? Our height was given to us as eight. We simply have to distribute our eight through to find our answer. So our lateral area is 80 plus 16 times the square root of 13, okay? And I'm running out of room, but feet squared, okay? This is our lateral area. It's not the neatest number, but it's what it is. Now to find our total area, we need to add our lateral area, okay, plus two times the area of our base. Well, what was our base? Our base is a right triangle. So we need to now figure out what is the area of our base. In right triangles, it's a little bit easier to find the area because uh, the altitude or the height, which is perpendicular to the base, is already given to us here, right? Our 4 is perpendicular to our side 6, and therefore that is our altitude and our base. So our area for our triangle is 1 half of 4 times 6, all right? We can reduce here so that our area is equal to 2 times 6, or 12, again, feet squared, okay? And we need two of those for our lateral area, so we're gonna put it in times two. So we have 80 plus 16 times the square root of 13 plus 24. So our total area is going to end up being 104 plus 16 times the square root of 13. Okay, that is our total area. Again, not the neatest number, very strangely written. Maybe we're not used to looking at that type of thing in math, but that's what it is, okay? And last but not least, we're gonna find our volume as I'm running on a board here. And our volume, remember, is our big B times H. We've already figured out our big B, okay? The area of our base is right here. We've already figured this out. Oh, I don't wanna forget my feet squared, okay? So we take our big B, which was 12, times our height, which is still eight, and that will give us our volume of 192 feet squared. So now we found, if I can get it all to fit, our lateral area, our total area, and our volume for this right triangular prism. Quick error correction, it's not 192 feet, sorry. I thought about that for a second. I thought that cannot be right. It is actually 96 feet squared. 12 times eight is 96 feet. Sorry, just a misprint there. Correction provided. On to the next problem. I wanna look at one story problem before we move on to our next solid. And that is story problem number 3.6. It's asking us to find the volume of this cube that has a total area equal to 96 inches, square inches. So our total area equals 96 square inches, okay? They want us to find the volume of this cube. Well, we've got to do a couple steps before we can find the volume of this cube, and that is to figure out what our lateral area is. Now we know a cube has equal sides all the way around, so we're gonna start there. Okay, so our lateral area is equal to the perimeter, which we don't know exactly, right? But we know that each side, if we label each side as X, we know that we still have to walk all the way around. So how many X's is that? Well, that's four times X, right? There are four lateral faces, therefore it's four times X and it's four times x times our height. Well, our height is happens to be x as well. So our lateral area is equal to four x squared. 
All right, now we're getting somewhere. So we know that our total area of 96 inches, okay, is equal to our lateral area of 4x squared plus our 2 times the area of our base. Well, our base is a square. What is the formula to find the area of a square? It's side squared, correct? So the area of our base is just x squared. All right, now this is becoming something we can solve, all right? So we know that 96 is equal to 6x squared. If we divide by 6 on both sides, that tells us that 16 is equal to x squared. 6 goes into 96 16 times, okay? If we take the square root of 16 and the square root of x squared, Okay, we are left with 4 equal to x. Now we have the length of our sides, right? Each of our sides now, instead of an x, is 4. Okay, so we can get rid of all of our x's. We know that every side of this shape is 4. Therefore, we can find the volume because the volume is equal to our big B, right? Or the area of our base, which is 4 squared times the height, which is 4. So we've got 16 times 4. So our volume is equal to 64 inches cubed. Remember, when we're taking a volume, it's always going to be something cubed. Unit of measure cubed. When we're taking an area, it's always going to be a unit of measure squared. Okay. Here we've multiplied this 4 inches by this 4 inches by this 4 inches, giving us inches to the third power. Volume is always to the third power. So that's how we worked through the story problem. We were given our total area, and we deconstructed it backwards. We went backwards, finding our lateral area. Therefore, we could plug everything in, substitute in our information into our formula, and break it down into which, how big was one of our sides in the cube. We got lucky because they're all the same. And then we were able to plug that into our formula to find their volume. The next solid, we're going to look at our pyramids. The point outside of the plane of the base is called the vertex. So the tip of our pyramid is called the vertex, okay? Just like in our other um, drawings, our other our prisms, okay, the lines coming from the vertex to the vertexes of the base are all called the lateral edges, and they create the lateral faces, okay? This shape has one, two, three, four lateral faces. This shape has only three, okay? Now, the difference here is the altitude. All right, I've drawn the shape a little bit bigger to demonstrate the altitude. The altitude comes from the vertex and hits perpendicular to the base. Now, unlike the prism, because the sides of this shape are slanted, the altitude cannot be part of a lateral edge or a lateral face. It's gonna come straight down from the vertex and hit perpendicular on the base right in the very center of the base. That is called the altitude. The other thing we need to look at on this type of shape is the slant height. Now the slant height is the altitude to the base of any one of the lateral faces. So now we're actually talking about the triangular face and the slant height comes down and will be perpendicular to the base here, okay? The slant height is represented with a cursive looking L. I don't know, the book's L kind of looks like this. Um, either one of those, I will most likely be using this description or this shorthand version. Um, but this is kind of what the book one looks like. So we still have 
a total area and we still have a lateral area, they're just slightly different, okay? The lateral area of a pyramid is still the sum of the lateral faces and the total area of the pyramid is still the lateral area plus the area of just one base, right? Pyramids only have one base this time. But there's a little bit uh, different ways that we can walk through this, okay? So the area of the lateral faces is, I'm just gonna write it like this, okay? Is equal to one half of the number of faces for this shape, we have one, two, three, four faces. So this N represents, uh, let's see here, N equals the number of faces, okay? Times S, and S is the length of a side, okay? So S is the length of a side. We're talking about regular, um, shapes here, regular pyramids that have their sides all have the same shape or the same size, I'm sorry. So S is the length of a side, okay? Times the lateral or times the slant height. Oh my goodness. Okay. Times the slant height. So one half the number of faces times a side times the slant height. And this is how we find the area of the lateral faces. Okay. The reason that that's important is because N times s or the number of faces times the length of the side is equal to our perimeter all right remember we needed perimeter we know that the number of faces times the length of a side is equal to our perimeter therefore our lateral area is equal to one half our perimeter times our slant height okay and therefore our total area is equal to our lateral area plus the area of our base, okay? These are the important facts. These are the important formulas that we need to know. Let's take a look at some actual problems. We don't wanna forget our volume. So our volume here for a pyramid is equal to one third, big B, or the area of our base, times the height. Now remember, the height is the altitude falls straight down from the vertex of our pyramid. Let's take a look at problem 3.11. All right, if we take a look at our pyramid for 311, we can see that our altitude is given to us as three, and the sides of each of our pyramid, this is a square pyramid, okay, are two. So first thing we need to want, or we want to find is our lateral area, okay? Well, our lateral area is equal to one half of the perimeter. Now again, perimeters walking along the sides or our faces times the side, right? Number of faces times the side. We have four lateral faces and our side is two. Four times two is eight. And then all of that is times our slant height. But do we know our slant height as of right now? We actually don't, right? This is our slant height right here. And we need to figure out what that is. But if we look at the drawing, we can see that it's part of this right triangle that includes our altitude, right? If our altitude falls down and hits right in the center of our base perpendicular, hitting right in the center then divides this in half. So we also know that this length is only going to be one. We now have enough information to use Pythagorean theorem to solve for our slant height, okay? So we know that three squared plus one squared is gonna equal our slant height or our hypotenuse. Three squared is nine, one squared is just one, equals c squared, okay? 10 equals c squared. If we take the square root of 10 and the square root of c squared, we're left with c being equal to the square root of 10, okay? 10, there's nothing we can pull out of there, 
So it is just the square root of 10. So now we know that our slant height is equal to the square root of 10. Okay. So now we can finish calculating our lateral area. We can reduce here, two goes into two one time, two goes into eight four times. So our lateral area is four times the square root of 10. We are not given any unit of measure here, but we need to remember that this is going to be uh, unit squared, okay? We need to remember that our unit is always going to be squared for an area. Now, let's look at our total area. Our total area is going to be our lateral area, which is four times the square root of 10, plus the area of our base. Well, here our base is a square. So the area is the side squared or two squared. So it's four. And that's it. We cannot add four and four times the square root of 10. They are not like numbers. We cannot add them together. So that is our answer, okay? Total area is four times the square root of 10 plus four units squared, okay? Last but not least is our volume. And our volume is one third, our big B, or the area of our base. What was the area of our base? It's right here. Each problem has a helping step for the next one down, okay? The area of our base was four and our height was given to us originally as three. Okay, we can reduce this three and this three. So our volume is simply four units cubed, right? Because we have, here we squared. So that was two units times another unit gave us our units cubed. I don't know what they are. They don't, we're not given specific units here, but we want to remember that a volume is always a unit cubed and an area is always a unit square, okay? We've taken the information that was given to us, used some of our prior information, and we were able to solve for our lateral area, total area, and volume of this pyramid. All right, I'd like to look at problem um, 313. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not the best artist, and this shape was a little bit complicated for me to try to draw on this whiteboard. Perhaps they sell pointier dry erase markers. I don't know, but um, I decided to draw it in pencil and then just cut it out and stick it on there. So <laughs> we're going to use that um, to the best of our ability to solve for our lateral area, total area, and volume. And we're going to start with our lateral area. We know that our lateral area is one half the perimeter. Here, each of our sides is 12 for our base, right? And we have how many faces? We have three faces. Three times 12 is 36, okay? And for this one, they've given us our slant height as being eight. So we can easily solve this problem we can reduce here, two goes into two one time, two goes into eight four times. So now our lateral area is 36 times four, which is 144 uh, units squared, okay? We've successfully solved for our lateral area. Now let's solve for our total area. Our total area is our lateral area, which is 144 units squared, plus the area of our base. Now, we don't know just yet the area of our base, but we can figure it out quite easily. Okay, so now we need to find the area of our base. Now, if we think back to section one of this book, rather than figure out our altitude, to the base and the perimeter that, or the um, area that way, we're going to use a formula we learned back then, which our area for our triangle is one half the apothem times the, peri the <laughs> times the perimeter. They've given us the apothem, haven't they? It's two times the square root of three. So we're gonna use that to find the area of our triangle here. So our area is one half two times the square root of three 
times our perimeter, which we've just figured out as 36, right? Our half and our two cancel each other out, so we're left with the area of our triangle being 36 times the square root of 3, okay? Yes, we're maybe not used to using this formula, but if the information is given to us, let's not make our job any harder. So our total area is our lateral area plus the area of our base, which we've discovered is 36 times the square root of 3 units squared. Now, again, we cannot add 144 and 36 times the square root of 3. These are the forms they're in. They are not like forms, and we cannot add them together. But we can continue. This is our answer, and it's a great one and we can continue with our volume. Our volume is equal to one third, the area of our base, which we figured out here as 36 times the square root of three, okay, times our height. Now, we weren't actually given our height, so we don't know our height just yet, but we can figure it out. Let's pull out the triangle that we have, the right triangle that we have, that our height is part of, and it looks like this. Okay, now using Pythagorean theorem, kind of in reverse, right? We're going to solve for our height. So our height squared plus two times the square root of three squared is equal to eight squared. So our height squared plus, now remember, when we square something like this, two times the square root of three, we need to square each part. So we square the two, and that gives us four. And then we square the square root of three. Now we know that the square root and a square are oppose each other. So the three just kind of falls out, right? But we have to multiply them together to get the proper answer, okay? We can't add them. We have to multiply them, okay? And those are equal to eight squared, which is 64. So now we have our height squared plus 12 equals 64, okay? I'm gonna move over here. That our height squared, we're gonna subtract 12 from both sides. You can see it on there, okay? Therefore, our height squared is equal to 52, okay? We're gonna take the square root of our height squared and the square root of 52, so that our height is equal to the square root of 52. Now, 52 does not have any perfect roots to pull out of there, so that's just what we're left with. So our height is equal to the square root of 52. Now we can continue figuring out our volume, but I've got to erase some stuff. All right, so now that we have our height, we can continue figuring out our volume. I'm going to reduce here, as I like to do, 3 goes into 3 one time, and into 36 12 times so that our volume is now equal to 12 times the square root of 3 times 52, okay? When we multiply square roots by each other, it's the same as multiplying the numbers in, underneath the radical, okay? That gives us that our, square, our volume is equal to 12 times the square root of 156, okay? Now, there actually is a root that we can pull out of there because that is the same as 12 times the square root of 4 times 39. And you're going to have to play with it a little bit to figure it out. I always start small and work my way up. Um, if you can just see that something falls into it neatly, then sometimes that's nice too, but that doesn't always work out. So. 4 is a perfect root, and we can pull it out. As we pull it out, it becomes a 2. So now we have 12 times 2 times the square root of 39. Or our volume being equal to 24 times the square root of 39 units cubed. Okay? So we've been successfully calculated the lateral area. The total area, now this time the volume took a little bit longer, but we were able to eventually get there. Good job, everybody. Okay, the next solid we're gonna talk about today are cylinders, okay? The base of the cylinders are congruent circles, and the altitude is the perpendicular 
line that runs between the two bases, okay? So it's perpendicular to both the bases. This one, poorly drawn here, is called a right cylinder. And then if you see a cylinder that's like this, it's called an oblique cylinder. The formulas for our lateral area, area total area, and volume are quite simple, and therefore this is my favorite of all the solids. And the lateral area is equal to 2 pi times the radius times the height. Yay! Okay, our total area is equal to the lateral area plus 2 pi radius squared. And our volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times height. So that being said, let's take a look at some of these problems. Let's start out with problem 321. This is my favorite section because there's no pictures I'd have to draw, okay? They give us that the radius is equal to 4 and that the height is equal to 5. And that there is enough information for us to figure out the rest. So our lateral area is equal to, and now they want exact numbers, so we're not going to be translating pi into anything. We're just going to be leaving it as pi. So 2 times pi times the radius times the height. Okay, well, pull out your calculators if you need to, but 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40. So our lateral area is 40 pi. Now it's 40 pi units squared. We don't want to forget that, but we don't know what the units are. They don't give us that information. But so we can move on to our total area. Our total area equals our lateral area, which is 40 pi, plus 2 pi r squared. So plus 2 pi times our radius squared. Okay, which is 40 pi plus, well, what's 4 squared? That's 16. 16 times 2 is 32 pi. So our total area is equal, oh, sorry, 32 pi. So our total area is 72 pi units squared. All right. And last but not least is our volume. Our volume is pi times our radius squared times our height, oh my goodness, which is five, okay? Well, that is pi, four squared is 16 times five. And if we get out our calculator, we will calculate that our volume is 80 pi units squared cubed. Okay, remember our volumes are always cubed. So cylinders are quite simple. I'm only going to do this one example today on this video. We simply need to have our radius and our height and just substitute them into our formulas where they belong. For our lateral area, our total area, and our volume. All right, the next shape on our solid tour is called the cone. The vertex of the cone is the, sh is the point outside the plane of the base, okay? And the base is always a circle. The altitude, which isn't drawn in this shape, but it's just like the pyramid, it comes down and it is perpendicular to the plane of the base, okay? It comes down from the vertex perpendicular to the plane of the base. The slant height is the length of any of the lateral edges, okay? A cone, just like an ice cream cone, just drawn upside down, okay? So it's a very smooth shape. All the sides come down. So the slant height is the length from the vertex to the base. If we think of the dissection of our cone as looking like this, we have our height or our altitude. It hits the center of our circle, therefore we can consider this the radius. And then our slant height is our lateral edge. And that leads us to our formulas for the cone. Our lateral area is equal to pi radius slant height. Our total area is equal to our lateral area plus 
pi r squared. And our volume is equal to 1 third pi r squared h or 1 third big B times a height, just like normal. 1 third big B times a height. They've just dissected it into what the big B actually stands for, which is the pi r squared. Okay, let's take a look at some of these homework problems. We'll start with problem 3.31. All right, now it's kind of given us an interesting little chart here, but we know that our radius is equal to 3, and it's given us our height equal to 5. And they want us to find the slant height, the lateral area, total area, and volume. Let's start with our slant height, okay? Our slant height is equal to what? Well, let's pull out that triangle that it's part of, okay? And we have a height, and we have a radius, but we don't know our slant height. Again, we can use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what our slant height is. So we have 5 squared plus 3 squared is equal to our c squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 25 plus 9 is equal to our c squared. So we've got 34 equal to c squared, okay? Well, we've got to take the square root of 34 and the square root of c squared. So the square root of 34 is equal to c. There is no perfect root inside of there, so we've discovered now that our slant height is equal to the square root of 34. And that's the first section of this problem that we need to complete, okay? Next, let's look at our lateral area. Now that we know our slant height, we can do the rest. And again, they want exact answers. We're not substituting anything for pi for these problems. So our lateral area is pi times the radius times the slant height, okay? So our lateral area is equal to 3 pi times the square root of 34. All right, let's go on to our total area. Our total area is going to be our lateral area, which is 3 pi square root of 34, plus pi r squared. Our radius was 3. So we've got 3 pi times the square root of 34 plus 3 squared is 9, 9 pi. Now, we would love to be able to add these together, but that square root of 34 makes these unlike numbers. Therefore, we cannot add them together. And that is our answer, okay? 3 pi times the square root of 34 plus 9 pi. That is our total area, all right? So let's solve for our last bit, which is our volume. So we've got 1 third pi times our radius squared, which is 3 squared, times our height, which is 5, okay? We can cancel 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into this squared one time. We can get rid of our square by dividing by 3. So we're left with pi times 3 times 5. So our volume is 15 pi units cubed. This is units squared. Again, we don't know what those units are. but So our volume is 15 pi. So we've used the information given us. And it will be different for each problem as moving forward. Substitute it into our formulas and solve for the lateral area, total area, and volume of our cone. Our final solid for this lesson is the sphere. Okay, Since a sphere has no base, it has no lateral area, only a total area, which we're going to actually call a surface area. Okay, so the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi times the radius squared, and we can still find the volume, and so the volume is 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So let's take a look at problem 3.41. Happens to be a story problem. It says find the surface area and the volume of a sphere having a radius of 4 inches. So it's given us the fact that our radius is 4 inches, okay? And they want us to find the surface area and the volume. Let's start with our surface area. Our surface area is equal to 4 
pi times the radius squared, which is four again. So that gives us four pi times 16, or 64 pi inches squared. Okay, four pi times our radius squared, the radius squared gives us our inches squared. Okay, and that is our surface area. Our volume is going to equal 4 thirds pi times our radius cubed. So now we have 4 cubed. Okay, can't do any fancy shrinking here, but we can just work this out. 4 thirds pi times, well, what is 4 cubed? Well, we did it right here, didn't we? We squared 4 and then multiplied it by 4, which is the same as 4 cubed. So it's 64. 64 and 3 cannot be reduced, unfortunately. So we add, we multiply across our numerator that gives us 256. And then we multiply our denominators, which is just the 3. Don't forget your pi. And then, of course, this is inches cubed. Now, for my own sake, this does not be need to be reduced for our work here in this lesson, in this class. So it can be left in this form. I don't want a decimal, definitely, and mixed numbers just look strange. So let's just leave this as an improper fraction for today. And that is our volume, okay? 256 over 3 pi inches cubed. Okay, so spheres are pretty well laid out. Once you have the, um, the radius, you can easily come back and find and substitute into our formulas to find the surface area and the volume. We're going to take a look at one more problem. Problem number 347 reads, find the surface area of a sphere that has a volume of 288 pi cubic inches. So this one, they're giving us the volume as 288 pi inches cubed, okay? They want us to basically solve backwards. We're looking for the surface area. Well, we have to solve backwards and solve for the radius. Once we can solve for the radius, then we can come in and solve for our surface area, okay? So we're going to substitute in our value into our volume formula and work backwards. So we have 288. I'm going to drop the inches cubed for now, but I'm going to hold on to the pi. 288 pi equals 4 thirds pi radius cubed. Okay. The first thing we want to do is get rid of this. We need to get radius by itself, right? So we need to get rid of this 4 thirds pi. Well, just like any other time we have a fraction, we want to multiply by the reciprocal to get rid of it. So we're first we're going to multiply by 3 fourths to cancel out this fraction. We're left with pi r cubed for now is equal to what we have here. Okay, we can reduce this. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 288 72 times. Okay, then we just take 72 times 3 to get 216 pi. Let me just double check my math here. Yes, okay. Now we still need our radius by itself, so we're going to divide by our pi. Remember, we're not substituting a value in for pi, so it is just a, another variable. But when we divide by pi, we can actually get rid of it on both sides. So now we have 216 equal to the radius cubed. Um, if you have the cube button on your calculator, I'd show you my phone, but I'm using it to make this video, so I can't right now. Um, you could take the cubed root of 216. It is actually a number that works out evenly. Otherwise, you're just going to have to figure out what the um, factors of 216 are to work those out. But it turns out that the cubed root, because that's what we need to get rid of, right? We want to take the cubed root, because we have a cube here. The cubed root of 216 is 6. 
okay? So our radius is six inches. Remember, we're dealing with inches here. So our radius is six inches. Now that we know that our radius is equal to six inches, we can come back and solve for our surface area, which is what we wanted in the first place. So our surface area is equal to four pi times our radius squared, okay? So our surface area is equal to four pi 36, four pi times 36. And that gives us a surface area equal to 144 pi inches squared, okay? Come full circle. And now we've solved for our surface area, which is what the problem requested. We were given a volume. We had to substitute that into our formula to solve for our radius, which we did here, all the way down. Once we were able to get our radius equal to six inches, then we could substitute that back into our surface area formula and solve for our surface area. And that is how you solve when working with a sphere. All right, everybody, we've covered a lot of different solids here today in this section. I want you to take, please take a few minutes, go through the section and write all of these formulas down on the back page on your um, postulates and theorems page so that you have all these formulas when you take your quizzes and your tests. Um, I'm not concerned on whether or not you can memorize every formula for every solid that we've worked with. I'm more concerned with your ability to uh, use the information given and the formulas given to actually solve for what we need to solve for. So please don't feel like you need to memorize all these. Please write them on your postulates and theorem page and use those on your test. Please make sure you um, copy them over correctly. Obviously, if you make a mistake, then that's um, going to cause errors in your calculations. So we've worked really hard. We've covered a lot of solids. You guys did a great job, and we'll see you next time.